Welcome to Lively Lewis Stories. Buckle up, because you're about to join Levi and Ivy on an adventure. All you need is your imagination, and off, off we, we go! go! Lively Lewis Stories! Hey there, awesome friends! Guess what? We're super thrilled to share some exciting news with you. We've got our very own Lively Lewis merchandise. Woohoo! Grab your parents and head over to LivelyLewisShop.com or simply click on the link below in our show notes. Now, let's dive into today's story. The day was as cloudy as it was dark. Thunderstorms were scheduled to come in fast, so the Lewis family scrambled to get a jump on their activities before the rain started. Come on, buddy, said Levi. Let me put a leash on. It's going to rain soon. But Buddy, the cockapoo, wasn't having it. He was far too comfortable on his nice fluffy bed made of silken clouds. At least that's what Buddy made it seem like. Mom walked in holding water bottles. What's going on? Why isn't Buddy leashed up? He won't lift his head, Levi complained. Oh, Buddy, said Mom. You really want to miss your chance going to the dog park? At that, Buddy couldn't help but lift his head. He even jumped out of bed and eagerly let Levi put his leash on, his tail wagging a million miles a minute. That's what I thought, Mom laughed. They took a shortcut to the dog park with big gray clouds gathering overhead. When Levi lifted his head up and looked up, he felt a drop of rain go plop and hit him right in the forehead. Their trip to the dog park would have to be a quick one. Only a few dogs were at the dog park. An old one, a scruffy one, and a happy-go-lucky puppy. Once Buddy was let off his leash, he went straight for the puppy after getting his fill sniffing the grass hedges. The two of them zigzagged in play. Whoa, look at him go, Mom, said Levi. He's a fast one, all right, Mom laughed. Watch where you're going, runt. The voice came out of nowhere and sounded like a bitter old man. Mom and Levi turned around, about to apologize for Buddy's behavior, but found all the dog owners on the other side of the park. Where had that voice come from? I'm sorry, Mom called out. You better be. He almost ran me over. Mom and Levi looked down and found that the voice belonged to none other than a dog sitting in the grass. He was a basset hound with a long belly and big droopy eyes and ears. The Lewises gasped. You can talk? Levi shrieked. Well, of course I can. Can't you? Sure enough, the dog's lips moved with every word. They'd really found a talking dog. Levi had a million questions on his mind, but the only one he could think of was, where's your owner? I don't need an owner, said the basset hound with a swish of his ears. I came to relax and enjoy a peaceful day at the park, but all these runts had to come and ruin it. Aren't you cold? Asked mom. It's supposed to rain soon. I'll be fine. I always am. The basset hound sure was sassy. Levi watched the dog lean down toward his foot so that he could get a good scratch in. The dog leaned further and further into his flapping foot. Come on. Do you need help? Asked Levi. The dog huffed and Levi took that as a yes. He found the dog's spot and scratched it good and hard. The dog's foot went thumping. Ah, thank you, said the dog. I'm Levi and this is my mom. What's your name? The dog mumbled under his breath. Hi-ho, Levi repeated. Shiloh, said the dog. Oh, Shiloh, nice to meet you, Shiloh. Where are you going when it rains? Shiloh didn't answer, making mom feel bad. I think you should come home with us, she said, at least until the rain is over. Shiloh the dog sighed heavily. I can give you more scratchies, Levi said encouragingly. Shiloh groaned. I guess I can humor you people. Mom and Levi went yay and did a high five. Meanwhile, not far from the dog park, Dad and Ivy were riding their bikes before the thunderstorm. Already it was windy and cold. I think it's going to rain soon, Dad, said Ivy. Looks like, Dad agreed. Let's head back. Both of them did a U-turn on the sidewalk and headed back toward the house. Suddenly a crack of thunder rolled above them, making Ivy cower. Dad? It's okay, honey. It's just thunder, said Dad. But what if there's lightning? There shouldn't be any. Before he could finish, a flash of light lit up the sky, accompanied by a loud whipping sound. Both Dad and Ivy yelped and saw a dark bundle rushing down from the skies. Landing in the playground nearby, they both stared wide at each other. 
What was that, Dad? Said Ivy. I don't know, but it's none of our business. We got to get back home. But Ivy was already pedaling fast in the direction of the crash site. Dad struggled to get to his feet on his own pedals. Ivy, wait! Luckily, the playground was mostly intact. In the bark by the slide, a big puff of smoke was glugging up toward the clouds. And when Ivy squinted her eyes, she could see sparkles in the middle. Were meteors and comets supposed to be sparkly? Dad, I think it's a... Uh... Ivy didn't finish her sentence because just then, a fluffy white head popped out of the smoke. And with it came its body, big and wide and glimmering. It was a horse but a horse with a great sparkling horn. Hey friends, what could that be? That's right, a unicorn, Ivy breathed. Oof, came a voice. Brr, mighty cold down here, isn't it? Ivy gasped. Dad's eyes were as big as saucers. You can talk? How cute, people! said the unicorn. I just love people. Yes, 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 I can talk. I can speak all your little languages. English is fun, fun, fun. You have so many funny words like bamboozle and cattywampus. The unicorn ripped her head around in laughter. Her laugh sounded like angels singing. Where did you come from? Asked Ivy. I was on my way to Atlantis, but I tripped and fell and how silly of me. Have you guys ever been to Atlantis? The merfolk have the coolest language. The unicorn made a bunch of foreign noises that went on for a long time. Once she was done, she smiled proudly. I said hi in Atlantean. Well, you should probably be on your way, said Dad. It's about to rain here and you wouldn't want to mess up your mane. That's right. Wet hair means clumpy, tangly hair. Thank you, peoples. See ya. She wiggled her tail and prepared for takeoff, but her glittering hooves never left the ground. She made a funny sound. That's weird. My wings aren't working. You have wings too? Said Ivy. Oh yes, you should see them. They're big and pink. That's so strange. I can't imagine why they aren't working for me. Maybe your Earth's lightning had something to do with it. Ivy felt the familiar pitter-patter of water on her face. It's starting to rain. Can she come home with us, Dad? At least until she finds her wings? I guess so, said Dad. We'd love to have you, Miss... Miss Serafina is the name, said the unicorn. I'd love to visit your home. Serafina trotted happily after Dad and Ivy on their bikes, her footsteps leaving a trail of petals and stars in the bark. Dad shook his head as they hurried home on the rain. I can't believe we're bringing home a unicorn. This will be the strangest thing Mom and Levi has seen all day. As you could imagine, that was in fact not the strangest thing Mom and Levi had seen all day. We found a talking dog, said Levi. A what? said Ivy. His name is Shiloh. Look, he's cuddling with Buddy in the dog bed. Sure enough, Ivy saw a sad looking dog nuzzled up to Buddy. Or rather, Buddy nuzzled up to the dog. Cuddling is a strong word, muttered Shiloh the dog. We found a unicorn. Her name is Serafina. She's going to stay here until her wings start working again, said Ivy. Serafina walked down the wooden hallways, careful not to bump into frames or furniture. My, my, it's tight in here. What is that? Oh, an elf. Serafina trotted up to the dog bed excitedly, ignoring both dogs' growls. I just love elves. So cute and little. I'm not cute, said Shiloh. They're even cuter when they deny it, giggled Serafina. The Lewises scratched their heads nervously. Rain was pouring outside, and it didn't bode well that both their new friends were, well, very different. Shiloh looked to Levi. Can we get rid of it? No, Shiloh, said Levi. She's our guest, just like you are. Now, now, no need to be so grouchy, Mr. Frowny Face, Serafina chimed in. That's just my face. Okay, Dad cut in. How about snacks for everyone? Carrots, beef jerky, we got it all. All kinds of food for all kinds of species. The tension was eased a little bit after Dad's suggestion for food. 
but still Levi and Ivy weren't too sure about how this was unfolding. They snuck over to the stairs to talk. I don't think they like each other, said Ivy. I don't think so either, said Levi. Maybe if we play a game together, then Shiloh and Serafina can become friends. What kind of game? Ivy crossed her arms. They're like black and white, day and night. What makes you think they'll like the same type of game? We'll do a game everyone likes. Can you guess what that game is? Hide and seek! The game of hide and seek was harder for some than it was for others. Serafina had a hard time hiding behind anything bigger than her, and Shiloh had a hard time even getting up to go hide. He preferred staying in the dog bed now that Buddy had abandoned it. Shiloh, said Levi after he'd counted to 30. You're supposed to hide. I am hiding, said Shiloh matter-of-factly. I'm in the warm furs of this nest and you found me. Ivy, who had helped Levi count, found Serafina behind a curtain with her white tail sticking out. Found you, Serafina. So soon, said the unicorn. My, you are good at this game. Well, you aren't exactly making it hard for them, muttered Shiloh. At that, Serafina threw aside her long, luscious mane. You're one to talk, Mr. Sad Sulker. They found you before me. That's because I'm not trying. Then try. Growling, Shiloh rolled over and got to his feet. Fine. Fine. Serafina stomped away, her hooves clicking and clacking. Shiloh trudged up to Levi and Ivy. Count to 30 again. This time you won't find me. The kids shrugged and did as they were told. They got to 30 and announced to the whole house that they were now looking. Not even a minute later, they heard the sounds of arguing in the hallway closet. You're on my tail. How can I not be? This thing is a giant mop. How dare you? I straighten and curl it too often for it to be called a mop. Levi opened the door, finding Shiloh and Serafina struggling to fit inside. She took my hiding spot, Shiloh complained. I, said Serafina, this was my hiding spot. You knew I needed somewhere big enough to hide. They argued back and forth a while longer. Levi and Ivy clamped their hands over their ears and ran up to mom and dad's room. Maybe they would know how to deal with this conundrum. Mom and dad were both understanding. They took turns scratching Buddy's belly, who had long abandoned his dog bed for a much better upgrade in the form of mom and dad's California King mattress. They have a lot to learn to get along, said mom. The storm won't end for another couple hours, so like it or not, they have to deal with each other. But all they do is argue, said Ivy. Some people just don't mesh well, honey, said dad. Maybe that's just the way it has to be. Maybe Serafina should leave, said Levi. All eyes turned to him. Ivy went red with rage. How could you say such a thing? You said Serafina could fly. If anyone should leave and can leave, it should be her. She can't go anywhere until her wings work. We already told you. Maybe you should kick out your friend Shiloh. You said he didn't even want to be here. He has nowhere to go, said Levi. He has to stay. Kids! Mom stood up. No one, not Serafina or Shiloh, are leaving. We agreed to house them until the rain ended, and that's what we're going to do. Just because they don't get along doesn't mean that you two shouldn't either. The kids looked at each other and sighed. You're right, said Ivy. I'm sorry, Levi. I'm sorry too, Ivy. Maybe we should play with them separately. I'll play with Serafina in my room, and you play with Shiloh in yours. Good idea, said Levi. Let's go downstairs and separate them before Shiloh and Serafina get in an all-out cat fight. Fortunately for the kids, Shiloh and Serafina hadn't gotten into any cat fight territory, but they were close. Their snouts were butted up close and they continued to argue. Levi and Ivy got between them. We came up with a solution, Levi announced. Shiloh, you'll come with me and Serafina will go with Ivy. No more games for all of us together. I couldn't be happier. Huff Serafina. You can say that again, growled Shiloh. They each followed Levi and Ivy to their rooms and attempted another game of hide and seek, but it was much harder with so many less places to hide. Both parties got bored really quick. Maybe we can nap, offered Shiloh. I don't want to, 
said Levi. I miss playing with Ivy and Serafina. Don't you? Even a little? Shiloh shook his furry head. Life is much better without that she-pony around. You weren't very nice to her, you know. Well, she wasn't very nice either. Not like you and your mom were. Look, I know you guys are different. You're a whole different species, but you have so much in common, too. We do? Asked Shiloh. From the other end of the hallway, Ivy and Serafina were having the same conversation. I'm a ball of light and love, said Serafina. He's just a grumpy old hound. But you both like humans, Ivy pointed out. You're both magical animals and you both love your friends even if you showed in a different way. You think so, said Serafina. I think so, Levi told Shiloh. Why don't we give it another try? We can play a brand new game. Maybe you guys can learn to be friends. Shiloh growled under his breath. Ugh, fine. I guess I can be nicer. I can be nicer, Serafina told Ivy. They met in the living room where both animals clearly didn't want to face each other. Levi and Ivy nudged them both, forcing them to say what they rehearsed in each other's rooms. I'm sorry for insulting you and your tail, said Shiloh. It's big and bushy, but kind of nice too. You mean it, Mr. Frowny? Shiloh rolled his eyes. I said I'm sorry, didn't I? Serafina let out a laugh. Oh, you are a doll, aren't you? It's okay, mister. I'm sorry for making you get up when you didn't want to. I forget not all animals are as upbeat as silly old me. Instead of hide and seek, the family decided to spend the rest of the rainy day watching cartoons for once. Serafina and Shiloh had something in common. They absolutely adored the Food Network channels. Really? said Ivy. You don't want to watch something else? No, keep it on that cheeseburger, please, said Serafina drooling. What she said, drooled Shiloh. <laughs> when they did get to the cartoons Levi and Ivy wanted to watch, they were all howling with laughter. Turned out that Serafina and Shiloh had a similar sense of humor. And before everyone knew it, the sound of rain had disappeared. I think it stopped for good, said Levi. So soon, whined Shiloh. Well, doesn't matter for me, said Serafina. I can't spread my wings. Oh, wait. Suddenly a giant pair of wings spread out of Serafina's back, making a gust of wind hit the other three in the face. Serafina was ecstatic. They work now, how lovely. Oh, how could I have not seen it before? My wings didn't work because they wanted me to take you with me. Shiloh? Huh? Said the very confused dog. Us unicorns have a code. Serafina explained. We need to make friends with everyone we meet. I already made friends with the Lewises, but it was you I needed to befriend. How cute. Well, Shiloh, would you like to join me on my trip to Atlantis? Do they give scratchies? Asked Shiloh. Oh, the best scratchies. Then to Atlantis we'll go. Mom and Dad helped Shiloh into Serafina's back and opened their front door. Please come again. Bye, Lewises. We'll be back, bid Serafina. Save me a cheeseburger, added Shiloh. And then they were off in a big pink whoosh. Levi and Ivy watched them disappear into the skies with smiles on their faces. They would always remember their new magical friends. Did you learn a lesson from this story? If so, what was it? And parents, do your kids have a story idea? Leave a comment on our Apple Podcast review page with five stars, the idea and your kid's name, for a chance to join Levi and Ivy on their next adventure. Until next time. Thanks for listening. Come back for more.